Um, okay, recording. Great. Well, uh, I'd like to call to order today, Thursday, January 13th, Longmont Housing and Human Service Advisory Board meeting. Um, and is there any public invited to be heard? No, none. None? Okay, thank you, Erica. Um, then welcome to new members, Robert and Stacy. Do you want to each introduce yourselves and maybe tell us a little bit about you? My last name is uh, pronounced Putnam. Uh, it, it's some say Tuldum and all kinds of things. Putnam. Uh, I was a uh, three-time uh, member of the uh, Long City of Longmont Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. And uh, I ended that this year. I'm also a volunteer uh, for the last three years, once a week for Meals on Wheels, which I understand you're going to visit at some point in May. And uh, I've, I'll probably recuse myself from that because I'm involved with it, right? To keep my kind of uh, impartiality in place. Uh, I'm an editorial cartoonist, and I still do editorial cartoonists for a bunch of newspapers in the West. And I've become very acquainted with problems of housing and human relations, especially among the uh, low wage earners, uh, retired senior citizens. I've watched other cities try to come to grasp to come to terms with some of these major problems, including the homeless. So that's one reason why I thought I'd get involved because I, quite frankly, I didn't know what Longmont was really doing. And one way to learn it, of course, is to be on the board. I'm also a volunteer for uh, Wildlands Restoration Volunteers. I've done over 250 projects uh, and they're located here in Longmont. I'm also a backcountry ranger with uh, Indian Peaks, James Peak Wilderness, Wilderness Areas uh, Alliance. Um, I'm also uh, on the board for my homeowners group, that kind of stuff. Um, I uh, have a college education, of course, in, in biochemistry <laughs> and uh, currently make my a good part of my living as a cartoonist. <laughs> so it just shows you that scientists can do a lot of things other than and be confusing. <laughs> well, we're glad to have you. And Stacy, uh, welcome to you as well. Oh, I live uh, near Spangler Park off of Mountain View um, Avenue, in the north part of uh, Longmont. <clears throat> well, hi, my name is Stacy Duncan. I'm um extremely pleased to be here. I uh, was so excited to learn that I was um, accepted to the board. I um, have lived in Longmont since 2001, which is stunning because I don't think I ever lived any place before this for longer than three years at a time. So um, uh, so that's pretty neat. It probably is a function of raising kids and um, families and things like that. We have um, we have three children and um, we are all in the area and our youngest is 18 and graduating from Niwot High School right now. We live in Northeast Longmont. And um, I have been for the past, gosh, probably 12 years uh, working uh, extensively and for long periods of time as a full-time volunteer with the single moms community in Longmont. So I've gotten to know um, a lot of um, know more than maybe I care to even about a lot of the social issues here in Longmont. I um, I have a real passion for um, for making things work, not just having programs to have programs. So um, so I think that I, I'm I'm excited to um, to use some of those experiences here on the board. Um, trying to think what else I've um, just recently ended this but um, up until now had been doing one week and a month on a domestic violence call line, um, which is um, gosh that population is um, uh, they need help, you know so many volunteers and um, it's it's so touching. Um, so, um, 
ended that recently. Um, also because I'm uh, back to work on a part-time basis. I, my Robert, my undergrad is in microbiology too. So funny, you should all have picked two scientists this time around. But um, I haven't actually worked in microbiology in quite some time, but um, you know, auxiliary industries and things like that. Right now I do uh, marketing part-time for an instrumentation company in Boulder. And um, uh, so my ability to volunteer full-time is not there. So this um, kind of came at a perfect time and just um, really excited to be here. We're glad to have you, Stacy And Caitlin, you made it. Sweet. I'm going to hand it back off to, to you, our, our chair. All right. Uh, we, made it, we made it through item three on the agenda. Welcome to the new, <laughs> new members. Thank you. Uh, it has been one of those days, so um, on top of one of those weeks. So, hi, welcome everyone. Uh, let's see. Oh, I just had the agenda up. There you go. Um, so the next item is um, approving the minutes from our December 1st and December 9th meetings. Uh, yes, Karen. Uh, maybe the new members would like to hear about us too. Yes, I would. <laughs> okay. Um, do you want to go first then, Karen? Okay. Uh, I've been on the board for two years. And uh, let me see, I'm a board member for our HOA and I have a disabled son who I take care of. Um, I, years ago, probably about 10 years ago, I went through the process of trying to get affordable housing, but we ended up doing, not doing that, but it's a background to what people have to go through to, to do that. Um, I also a volunteer for CASA, court appointed special advocate, and uh, I volunteer at HOPE once a week. And uh, I joined the board just because I'm interested in, you know, especially middle, middle income people trying to get affordable housing not just people that need affordable housing, but you know, regular people that have jobs and everything to get, you know. So it's it involves a lot more than just that too. So that's that's my and I've been in Longmont. Let's see, I was in Longmont from 1981 to to 93, and then I moved. Then I left and then moved back in 2012 and been here since. So seen a lot of changes in Longmont for sure. And welcome, Stacy and Robert. Um, I've been in Boulder. I've been in uh, Colorado since 1964 and lived mostly in Boulder. Uh, I just, I came to Longmont in 2006, something like that, and bought a house here because I couldn't afford to live in Boulder. <laughs> Right. Um, Graham or like Albuquerque Balloon Festival behind you. Yes. <laughs> uh, actually, I'm not sure if it's Albuquerque. I think it's uh, somewhere in Europe, but. Oh, is it? Boy. But I'm not 100% sure, so. Hmm. Uh, well, I'm Graham. It's my fourth, yeah, fourth year on the, on the board. Um, I got a degree in philosophy, so not a scientist at all. I have a degree in philosophy from CU. <laughs> there you go. And um, I'm a contractor and uh, yeah, I love serving on this board. There's a lot of great people in the community doing a lot of good stuff. And um, I feel you know, honored to be able to support that in some small way. Great. Uh, Kimberly, do you want to go? Sure. Welcome, Stacy and Robert. My name's Kim Stringa. Um, I'm also a scientist, at least I majored in biology, but now I'm a public health nurse and have been for almost 20 years, which led me to um, being a part of this group and just seeing the impact of unstable housing on um, communities, especially vulnerable communities. And I've really enjoyed being a part of this group. Um, so welcome. I've been, uh, I've worked at, uh, as a, in the laboratory at Boulder Community Hospital and also Longmont United Hospital for many, 18 years or so. 
Um, and I am Caitlin. This is my third year on the board. Um, I've lived in Longmont for about five years. Stacy, I can relate to your uh, comment about uh, this being longer than I've really lived anywhere. Um, as a kid, uh, I remember I changed schools every year until like ninth or 10th grade, I think. And, and three years was about the longest that we ever, ever really lived anywhere. So um, five years in, in one city and getting connected to the board has been um, one of the, the better ways to, to be connected to the community. So um, I, I was a political science major, not a, uh, not philosophy, um, maybe a little science in there, but um, I worked as an attorney for a few years. Um, I no longer practice and I now work in tech, um, at least for another week or so. I don't know what I'm doing after that. I, 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 I resigned last week, so um, we'll see what's next. Um, but um, anyway, um, so that's, that's me. Um, I think that's it for introductions. For well, Shakita. Well, yeah. like, Shakita's like I'm a Coco liaison <laughs> slash former board member. And Erica and Albert, Alberto too. So. Yeah, so um, thank you, Stacy and Robert. Um, I will say that this board did not choose you. I chose you to be on this this board, your interview was with city council and I was on city council. So um, it's my fault that you're on this board. Um, so <laughs> the rest of the board members can blame me or reward me and say, yay, or oh, either or, but um, I will say this, these, they are wonderful people on this board. That's why I chose to be the liaison. Um, it's just so much to learn. Um, and each of you bring different perspectives that you will come that will come up in the processes of what we do. Um, I will say that our meetings sometimes can be very long. It's a lot of information. So uh, when we get into it, you know, we have to like chop, 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 get on it because we could be here to 10, 11 o'clock at night. And none of us want that, especially not me, especially my city council meeting was to midnight on Tuesday night. So. I'm just saying that. <laughs> and I work full time. I work for a nonprofit called YWCA. I'm Director of Community Engagement and Equity. So I do have a full time job. I also have a consulting business as well. Caitlin, you who, uh, I mean, great job. Uh, I, I, I guess I could say congratulations for quitting. Um, I think great things are coming for you. And, you know, so just look at it as wonderful opportunities. Um, yeah, so anyway, you all can always email me if you have any other questions about the board or, or anything else. Um, please do email me if you have any questions. So, so happy to see you here and welcome. Erica, why don't you go and then I'll, and I'll, then I'll go. All right, so my name is Erica Mars, like Stacy um, knows uh, earlier from our board. Um, meeting, but uh, I am the administrative coordinator for community services. So you will be getting packets from me uh, for the board meetings, as well as um, links, any sort of communication that you need to uh, rely over to Eliberto or Karen or anybody um, from staff, um, go through me and I can definitely get you there. Thank you. Uh, so Stacy, I already told Stacy this is Robert, but um, so I am Eliberto Mendoza. I've been here since 2007, actually. Um, and uh, I am the project coordinator for the community services department. I work with Karen on a lot of the initiatives that this board uh, has insight or uh, provides, uh, does their work around advising on. Um, a lot of times I will be the main presenter to this board because I do a lot of the work for this board, for example, as we get closer to the funding process, I, I do a lot of the, the creating the, the content for our conversations. For example, I set up all of the allocation formulas and, um, and uh, things like that. So you'll be seeing, seeing a lot of me in these board meetings, uh, of course, along with Karen, who is not here. She is our community services director. Um, but yeah, my role is to support this board and do the work of the community services department in the city. 
Um, and I really, really value uh, your time and your work here. So uh, I, I am very appreciative of all that this board does. Um, so, so with that, I think we've done, I think everybody's been introduced. We'll turn it back to Caitlin to lead us forward. Fantastic. Um, the next item on our agenda is approving the minutes from December 1st and 9th. Uh, do I have a motion to approve those minutes as presented in the packet? Motion to approve. Okay. And a second. I can second. Okay. Karen seconded. All those in favor of approving those minutes, please raise your hand. All right. So moved. So approved. Um, the next item is official posting location for um, this board's agendas. Eliberto? I think that's Erica. Oh, <laughs> that's okay. one that's I was one like, thing. might be Erica, might be Eliberto. Yeah, I know. I, I don't. I don't know where this where this is posted. This is Erica's room. Okay. Um. So the official posting for the Housing and Human Services Advisory Board is outside of the Civic Center. Um. The agendas are always posted right there, um, as well as on the um, City of Longmont's website. Um, they are posted uh, on there virtually as well for access. So either of the two places. So I think I think Caitlin that we do need a motion for this. Okay. So so motion. Erica so so I think we need a more specific. So is it on the west side, north side? Where where are they posted? On the west doors. On the west doors. Yes, on the west doors. Okay, so I think yeah, because I think we need a specific motion of where the designation is. Um, so do we have a motion to maintain doing them on the west doors of the civic center um, as well as online, or does anyone have any questions before we do that? So that is where we have been posting them. I think when civic center was under construction, we did it on the north doors, um, but. Since it is now complete, we can do it on the west doors again. Motion to keep the posting on the western doors. Okay. And a second, please. All right. Robert has seconded. All those in favor, please raise your hand. All right. So approved. And draft work plan for 2022. So now this is me and I'm going to I'm going to share my screen just so for Robert and Stacy every year this this board adopts a work plan for the year. It is a guideline of what the things that we want to accomplish, of course, throughout the year, there are things that come up. Um, and so that. Um, this is not set in stone, it, it, but it does help us uh, keep on task because there is a lot of work for this board to do. So I'm gonna share my screen. Can everyone see the Longmont Housing? Uh, can everyone see the Longmont Housing Advisory uh, Work Plan? Yeah. All right. Good. Uh, so yeah. what we're gonna try and accomplish tonight, of course, we've done the we've done a new member orientation. We're gonna select officers for the next coming year. Uh, and we're going to discuss our site visit schedule. When it, um, so we're going to talk about that uh, in February. Here's some of the things that we're going to do. I think what's the, the thing to really think about is there was funding that was not allocated, uh, but we were there was one project that the board was very interested in funding, uh, but it was dependent on state funding, and we have not yet heard uh, because of I'm assuming because of the pandemic and staff out over there as well. Uh, we have not been given final word. So we're going to bring that back um, in February to hopefully finish that out because we need to bring it back before the council. We're also going to discuss, um, we're going to continue working on our 2023 20, funding process. I sent something to the board, uh, I think at a December meeting, uh, a model from uh, Mile High United Way that we want to uh, explore and if there's other ideas then we can do that as well um, and then I always put this I think is important I, I was talking to Stacy earlier uh, how valuable the human services needs assessment is so I, I think it's important that we you know we take it's a little bit of time and go back and look at it and think about whether 
things have changed. Do we want to do an update, etc.? Um, and then, you know, we're going to look at CBDG in March. Uh, we start doing our site visits, get them all reported out on. Hopefully, this is when we start having for those that are interested in housing. I think this is uh, Kathy and Molly put these on the uh, work plan for March to bring back the application for the um, for housing. Uh, just so you'll be aware, there have been time where they needed uh, to do the applications, you know, a little more timely. So we've had we we've, we've added them kind of last minute to agendas. We make sure we get you the information, but just be aware that that may happen. Uh, so I'm not going to go into everything, but I, unless someone has a question, I uh, just want to make sure that we review it. Uh, I think we have it to finalize it on 2022 at on February, but just want to provide provide it to the board and answer questions or take ideas. Uh, I don't know if we have a lot of uh, we need to do training, so there may be some training that the board may want. This would be a great time to offer ideas for training that the board would appreciate that I could look into and bring back. So I guess I'll open it up for, uh, we'll stop sharing and open up for discussion and, and for taking ideas. Are there any questions or ideas that folks have that you wanna bring up for the work plan? Um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Eliberto, it looks like, and um, correct me if I'm wrong, that we're, we're trying to move up the um, submission date, uh, maybe a little bit into August so that we can maybe spread out um, some of those, those long meetings. Because um, I see reviewing funding applications and then hearings and deliberations in September and October, is that correct? Yeah, like like and like I told the board before, uh, the only the only the only consideration to that is we do we do this as a collaborative partnership with Boulder County and the City of Boulder, and um, you know it'll be it, we just want to make sure that they they are um, you know aligned with our timing. Um, so I think that is the plan, Caitlin, uh, to to start earlier so that we can spread out um, because that is really the bulk of the work of this of this housing and human services advisory board it is reviewing the <coughs> and having those hearings. I have a, a question uh, just a, on these site visits are they done on the second uh, Thursday of the month or is it Great question. No, the site visit. So we're, we'll talk about that. Those, those that's in the agenda, but we'll talk about that. But typically, they are done in. We we uh, try. Erica usually handles the coordination of the site visit. They can be done in person. They can be done virtual, just depending on the comfort level of everybody involved. Um, and they happen whenever people. I mean, we, I I think we did. I think we did one on us. I think I did one with with Kath, Karen on a Saturday morning. Um, so it's really, it, it's much more, it's more flexible than that. It's not, it doesn't happen uh, like our meetings. Okay. I just thought there may be one scheduled day of the month, you know, that you could write down in your little calendar. No, we, no Erica will coordinate those because she has to coordinate with board members and of course the agency leadership as well. Okay. And, and typically, um, one or two board members do an individual site visit. We have enough of those happening that it doesn't make sense for every member of the board to do those site visits. So we we break them up, um, usually based on availability as well as what um, agencies folks may be interested in or haven't um, don't know much about. It's a really great opportunity to learn more about the agencies that we are funding and see how they're doing and the impact they're making in the community. So again, we're not going to finalize the work plan until next month. If if there's no ideas now, but if if all of, if somebody gets an idea between here and there, please, uh, in particular around trainings, if there's something I mean, we it's been a while since we do an evaluation training, um, we could do that again, or data training, we could bring that. It's been a while since we do a best practice training. So that um, you know, so if anybody has anything they want to know um, more about um, the process or uh, no, then just yeah, just 
you can email me or email Erica any ideas and we will finalize this plan in February. Awesome. Thanks, Eliberto. Uh, oh, Karen Phillips, sorry. I apologize, I didn't see your hand. I, I just think that it's always good to have training on, on the evaluation process. You know, even, even a review, but I, I still think it's really important that we get trained how to, how to do the best we can when we have to evaluate these different agencies. Okay. I'd like to see I will training. I'll find time. time. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I would echo that. And I also think that um, one of the things that we, that sort of came through some of our conversations last year, um, some of it comes out in conversations, but um, you know, we ended up weighting some things um, in the evaluation process is talking through um, those earlier than later um, mm -hmm. so that we, um, so that we know what those, some of those priorities are. Um, I was also thinking for um, new and existing board members, it, it could be helpful to see that um, needs assessment earlier. It, it's, it is a big, it is a big chunk of information and um, can be a little difficult to wade through. And I think the sooner we do it in the year to have like some review of what those needs are, um, giving access to folks, um, particularly if they have not seen it before, could be really helpful. So, um, Councilwoman Yarborough. I think that is wonderful. Um, I know Eliberto, that's gonna be like a lot, but if we can coordinate that in enough time, you know, I think it is important. Um, I think when I came on, I don't think I had a training. So um, because we do up, update these evaluations as we go, we look and see what worked, what didn't work. And I think it is important for um, our new members too, to see um, what we've done in the past and how we evaluated those organizations and their needs and everything like that. And then moving forward, because then they can give their perspectives or have a clear understanding when those needs assessment comes and uh, come around and they can look and say, oh, they're not looking, this is not in that bucket or that bucket, right? And so um, I think it would be more beneficial if we could do that and maybe just have like one training and, and everybody would come to that training. I think that would be beneficial. And if you need anything from me, just let me know. Yeah, so, so I'm not so, training, but let's get this straight. I'm not doing the training. I'll no, no, that's it. fine. <laughs> I'll bring the coffee or whatever, but just saying. Well, yeah, no, that's fine. So for, for just for, for my own clarity's sake, so what I'm hearing is a couple of things. One is a training looking at how we evaluate these application applicants from our, but then also a review of our human services needs assessment, taking a, a, another look at that. Is that is that what I'm hearing? Or are we talking about those two things combined? Or uh, or do they each merit their own their own session? I was thinking of those as separate, but okay. Uh, okay. just because they they impact each other, but they don't act like they don't have to be done together. So like okay. I would say, like if we did something on the human service needs assessment, you know, even February, March, like early enough so that when we are talking about what the process is and how to do the evaluations. We're, we're all sort of a little fresher back on that needs assessment. Um, okay. And the new folks have seen it and are not like trying to figure out what we mean by buckets and how this fit in with the, all of that. Um, Cause I think that that can be, that's a, it's a lot. Okay, that's, that's great. That's great clarity. I was just wondering. Okay, awesome. Well, we'll take a look at these minutes and we'll see if we can add that to it and I can work with Karen on developing something for the February meeting. Um, yeah, or if not the March at the latest. All right. Any other questions or comments on the work plan? Okay, we will come back to it next month to, to do the approval. Um, site visit schedule. Erica, is that you? So Erica put it together, but I either one of us can do this. Okay. 
So essentially there's 16 um, agencies that need to have a site visit this year. Um, so what I was thinking is just the easiest thing to do is start them next month and do two per month so that we could get through the 16th and be done by September. Okay. Question. Or comments. I think this is uh, the last page in our packet. If anyone wants to see the schedule that was um, that was put together, and I can share it if need be too. Erica, is this based on the three-year cycle through site visits? Yeah. Yep, that's correct. Cool. Well, well, the three-year cycle, and we have a tradition uh, of doing a site visit with any newly funded agency that we've not funded in the past. So when I'm looking at this list, we haven't funded Focus Reentry, and Centro Amistad, uh, Medicine Horse. We have funded Mother House, but it's been quite some time since they applied. We've and not queer funded the yeah, Queer Asterix and St. Benedict's or the Reentry. So there's quite a bit of new agencies actually that we uh, funded this year that we've not funded or either not funded in the past or has been quite some time since we funded. Awesome. Um, and Erica, is the is your thought that um, folks would let you know which um, site visits they'd like to, to attend and then you'll coordinate with them as the dates get closer for that? That's correct. So I was kind of hoping that um, you guys would decide what um, which agencies you would like to visit and then that way I can coordinate with the site contacts and yourselves to see what what your schedule's availability is and then I can um, set them up for you guys. Um, for your purposes is, do you want, I know, let's see, I think we've got six of us here. Deanna's not here. I think we're missing one. I'm- Catherine is I'm out. Catherine. Catherine. So, um, oh, go I'm ahead. I'm not sure about, I was gonna say Brian is out too, but. Yes. Not here. <laughs> um, so I don't know if we need to, if it's easier, because I think last time we had everyone on the, the first call of the year. And so we kind of went through and raised our hands, but given that we're missing several folks, um, do we want, do you want to do something, um, have folks email you with their preferences, or do you want to get preferences from folks on the call and then have the folks who aren't here send well, you information? What's the, what is the easiest way to do this? So what I would suggest is because you guys are here, uh, the, the folks that are here tonight, um, it's basically you first come, you get to pick the ones that you're very interested in. And then yes, the rest can, you know, they, they get to choose what's left. Okay, uh, Kim. Um, Aliberto, do you mind just um, bringing it up so we can all sure. see it? Yes, Great. I will Thank share you. it right now. All right, can everybody see it right there? So that's. Um, oh, hold on, I hold on. don't see I, anything. Being I, for, I, for, I forgot to hit the share go. button. Okay. There we go. And then Graham, did you want to add something or have a question? I was just going to uh, indicate which ones I'm open to visiting. <laughs> if we're ready for that. Um, Medicine Horse Program, Queer Asterisk, and Mother House. Um, let, should we, let's do it um, maybe from the top. Erica, what's easiest for you in terms of going through this? Do you want us to go through the top and have people raise their hands if they want to go to one? Do you want individual people to go through? Yeah, that would probably be the easiest. Just go down the list and if you want to okay. volunteer for that, yeah. Okay, uh, let's start with Attention Homes. Okay, so we've got Robert. Um, and Karen. All right. Um, anyone else for that one? Okay, great. Um, Boulder County AIDS Project. I'll do Robert and I will go on that one. Yeah, it's okay. Then just, you know, just to be safe, we should have no more than two of you at any one place at any one time. Yes. And it's okay um, if we don't fill in two people because we've got three board the, members who are not here. And so we yeah, want to make sure. We don't have to have every place visited tonight. 
uh, is just I, I would I would I've done I've been on your side before and I would say choose the ones that you are most interested in visiting. Yeah. And um, and if we get closer to it and something happens where folks can't make it because of schedules and so forth, um, I know that the staff will come back and ask if there's um, other availability. So um, community food share. So we've got Stacy and Karen. Um, El Comité, Kim and Stacy, El Centro Amistad, Kim and Graham, um, Focus Reentry, that's me, um, I had, what's that, what is that one? What do you, I want to know what that one is. That's I Have a Dream. Have a dream. Oh, I have, I have a Dream Foundation. Apologies. I should have known that. Robert. Okay. Uh, Longmont Meals on Wheels. Stacy. Medicine Horse Program. Graham and Caitlin. Mile High United Way. Okay, we've got no one for tonight. Uh, Mother House. Graham, Caitlin, and Robert. And that doesn't necessarily mean all three of us will go, but as we get closer in scheduling, um, we can figure out who will be there. Um, St. Benedict's Health Ministry. Okay. Um, you can put me down for that one, Erica. Queer asterisk. Graham. Safe shelter. Robert, Karen, and Stacy. The re-entry initiative. Karen. And via mobility. Okay, no one for that one. So we've got a few that are open. We, I think we've got plenty of options for our folks who are not here. And then if, um, if we have any that are still, um, that don't get sort of first round <laughs> um, folks going, Erica, obviously we can bring those back and make sure we get um, board members. All right. Any other, anything else you need for that, Erica, right now? No, really, um, I was just more worried about the February site visits just because, you know, to schedule, um, but that works perfect for me. Awesome. Okay. And let's see. The next item is officers um, for this year. 20, we, so we typically elect a chair and a vice chair. Eliberto, do you want to speak to that at all or? Yeah, so basically the um, the chair position is the uh, person who facilitates and leads the meetings, uh, begins the meetings, and uh, asks for a motion to end the meeting. Uh, we, Karen and I try to send this person, and I emphasize the word try because it doesn't always happen. Uh, we try and send this person uh, 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 the agenda ahead of time to get their perspective on it. Uh, if they have other ideas or think about, have other priorities. Um, and of course the vice chair stands in if that person is unavailable. Uh, and I think that's basically the duties of the chair. And, and then the chair usually attends the um, council oh, meeting when we present correct. funding recommendations. Um, however, um, you know, I attended the last one and Eliberto and Karen um, stole the show and did amazing presenting the recommendations. And so uh, there were no questions or anything from council. So I was there uh, just to wave. <laughs> um, so um, do we have any nominations or let's start with, do we have any questions about what these roles are um, before we, we dive in?
okay. In that case, do we have any nominations, including self nominations for chair? I'll nominate Caitlin for chair. Um, Eliberto, can can someone serve as chair two years in a row? I, I remember there being some something, but I don't remember. I, I am looking at the bylaws right now. Give me a second. I, I think so, but I'm, I am looking at the bylaws. I believe you can, but. I thought Brian was for two years. Yeah, I believe so. I, I don't is think it, it's Is an it issue. maybe there's like a, I can't remember. For some reason, I thought there was a reason Brian couldn't do it again, but I don't remember. Like maybe is I might just be making something up completely. In oh, head. okay. Okay. Here it is. The term for office of the chair and vice chair will be filled for one year. Officers may be reelected, but may not serve more than two consecutive full terms. You just done one. Got it. So yes, you are, you, you have one more that you can serve as chair. Okay. Well, thank you, Graham. Any other nominations for chair? Okay. I think, I think then we have to, we actually have to vote on that even if it's one. So all those in favor of Caitlin being chair again. <laughs> okay. Um, all opposed? As near as I can tell reading the bylaws, which I have in front of me here, uh, there's nothing says you can't do, six, uh, a chair can't do successive terms. That's correct. Okay. And I'm abstaining from the vote. <laughs> So uh, I think, so that was a four to zero to two. Robert, were you abstaining from the vote or did you want to vote? Okay. Um, Karen, did you have something you wanted to add? Okay. Thank you all. Uh, um, so we will also need a vice chair. Do we have any nominations for vice chair? Karen? Yeah. I, I, uh nominate Graham for vice chair again. He did a great job and he's been here long too. So that's why nominate. Okay. Any other nominations? Okay. All those in favor of Graham as our vice chair for 2022. Right, we've got five opposed and abstaining. You're abstaining from your own vote, Graham. All right. Well, we will do this again, Graham, and then we will hand over the reins because we will not be able to do it again. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Um, the last item we have is announcements or other business. Do we have, Karen? Yeah, is there anything we can do with the uh, Marshall fire thing you know, on the board? I mean, I don't know. Is there anything? So I, I, I can let Shakita speak to this, but I think city council is addressing and they've asked for, um, I was at the city council meeting on Tuesday and city council member Susan Yellow-Berry brought this up. And so I think city council is addressing how they can support um, the Marshall fire uh, with their contingency. Um, so uh, I know that that our legal and our city manager is looking into that, Karen. Thanks. You said it, Eliberto, that's right. So um, Councilwoman um, Susie Hidalgo Faring, she brought it up because there are a lot of teachers who were also affected by those fires. And she's also a teacher herself. And we have a contingency fund. And so she 
uh, made a motion to uh, for us to give 20,000 out of our contingency fund um, to those victims. Um, so we have to get that approved. And so we have our city attorney who's working through that to make sure that we can do that. So yeah, it's, it has been brought up. And just so you're aware, I mean, um, you know, I used to be on the board of the Community Foundation in Boulder County, and so I get I, I, I get a lot of communication from, from the Community Foundation. I'm also right now serving with Madeline on the board of the Longmont Community Foundation. Um, and um, Boulder County has done a really good job of, of um, gathering support. Uh, last I heard, they had over 50,000 donors and over $19.5 million. Yes for uh, the victims of the Marshall Fire. So there is a lot of community support going to, to these folks. Um, Eliberto, I had one question and I don't know mm -hmm. if you're the right person to ask or if it's something that um, can take back. Um, I know that there have been a few organizations that specifically um, provide low, um, provide uh, rentals for low-income folks in our communities, and um, a few of them have announced waivers of the income requirements. Um, and I'm curious about um, whether and how that impacts their, you know, sort of like, you know, whether Longmont Housing Authority is going to be doing that or not. And for those other organizations that are that are waiving those requirements, um, I, I think my concern is that obviously there's a huge amount of support for um, folks who have been affected by the fire. And I'm concerned that like some of the most affordable options for the lowest income in our community may you know, sort of be shifted um, in a way that um, means that those are not, not accessible to the folks who can least afford it. And so um, I don't know whether anyone at, in the city or at the county level even is looking at that and sort of the responses and ec equity around that. So I'm kind of wondering I'm just wondering more about that from the perspective of like um, affordable housing grants and those types of things that some of these organizations may have. Um, that's a great question that I can't answer at this point. I have I, heard of that as well. Uh, I, I thought I heard that it was the counties uh, um, that was doing it through their um, uh, Boulder County uh, Housing Authority. I. I not heard anything, but Karen would probably be the person to ask about LHA. Okay. I don't think we're doing that in LHA. Oh, so, so. yeah, Longmont Housing Authority is also, um, I believe it's like three or four units at different uh, of the different properties that are also um, leasing those. Um, and I know that they're only leasing it for one year. So it doesn't matter what the, if they qualify, don't qualify, but they will be able to lease it for one year. Okay. Erica knows more about what's going on at LHA than I do. Okay. But I will say that Boulder County also, um, yeah. they're, they are doing a month to month um, leasing throughout Boulder County. So it's not a year lease, but it is a month to month. Got it. Um, I, and this is um, just some of some of the concerns I've heard, Eliberto, and I don't know if passing them along to Karen, is that, you know, that waiving, for example, some of the documentation because people may have lost all of their paperwork, waiving, you know, um, lease ending fees and that sort of thing makes a lot of sense. The the income requirement, I, I had heard, I've heard some concerns from community members that, you know, um, in some areas in Boulder County, people have been waiting years sometimes to get into affordable housing. And, you know, obviously losing your home is not something that like, I don't want, I, I don't want it to feel like people are pitted against each other. We have a massive tragedy in our community um, uh, with the fire. And we also have a massive uh, concern around affordable housing more broadly. And so um, wanting to make sure that folks who, because I, as I've seen like, comments and people talking about like, hey, I've been waiting for four years to get into affordable housing, haven't gotten there. And now like, I'm going to get pushed down the list. Uh, I don't know that that's what's happening. But you know, you know, some of our most vulnerable communities then are being pitted against each other for this affordable housing. And that that's really concerning to me. Um, because obviously, they're not none of those folks are at fault for 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 where we are in in housing prices right now. Um, so I, I appreciate those concerns and I will be, Karen is the one who's really more involved on affordable 
the regional housing uh, collaborative. She's a part of that that group. So I will definitely relay that to her. Um, and of course, Shakita can, as, as a council person, can have her, her influence as well. Um, you know, BCPH or the Boulder County Housing Authority is, is led by the, ultimately is led by the commissioners, right? So, yep. so yeah, I, I, I hear that and I will definitely let Karen know the concerns you're hearing and your concerns about this issue. Thank you. Thanks for bringing that up. That's a really good point. And um, I mean, I know there's been talk of rebuilding those, you know, people from the um, from the Marshall fires may come and, you know, may not want to live there anymore and want to live in Longmont. And what happens then, you know, we have such a short shortage of inventory as it is. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of talk going on, but I didn't really, um, what you brought up is a really good point and definitely I will address that for sure. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's 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 hard. I mean, we we've also heard people who are like, my insurance company never like encouraged me to increase my coverage, and so like my coverage is what my house was worth ten years ago, and it, there's no way I can rebuild with what they're they're gonna give, you know. And so it's very there's no there's no good outcomes there, and so um, whatever we can do to try to make things more equitable. Um, along the way. Um, uh, Shakita, I, I got some information from a community member who I guess like there's someone at CU has, who has studied um, responses to tragic like uh, fires and floods and so forth, particularly like there was a lot of research post Katrina in a lot of the communities affected there and how some of the immediate responses actually increased inequity, um, but that some things helped um, improve it. And so, um, I'd be happy to send that your way is something that might the council might be interested in taking a look at. That would be awesome. Absolutely. Of course. Thank you. And then thinking about these with the needs assessment too, moving forward, you know, last time we were just talking about people who didn't, who needed internet access, right? During the pandemic, staying at home all day. You know, here we are with some other issues that we really have to take into effect and think about that when you're doing um, these evaluations and these assessments. So think about that too. Mm -hmm. All right. Other announcements or business that we need to go over? I would be remiss if I did not say that I am certain that. Um, Boulder County's MLK Day um, events um, are coming up on Monday, and I am fairly certain that uh, Madeline would love and appreciate seeing the faces of uh, board members and staff members there. Um, I don't know the specifics of that event. I do know that they um, they were doing something and um, have events. So check out the the city and the county uh, web pages for what those official sponsored events are for for MLK Day. Well, I know Lafayette is doing a, a car drive um, event for MLK because usually they walk and have a speaker and things. So they're doing like the youth usually put that on in Lafayette. Um, Sunday, the NAACP kick off at the Dairy Center. They have someone from um, uh, Withers, um, our, the one who took all the pictures of the civil rights movement, the marches and everything. So his daughter created a foundation. And so that will be kicked off at the Dairy Center on uh, Sunday at one o'clock. 1.30. One thirty. There you go. Elberto knows. So well, I, just, I just looked it up. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, and then Monday is at Silver Creek High School in Longmont, um, where they do all of their MLK. Uh, events and of course they are you know having COVID precautions and and everything everyone has to have a mask and I think when you walk in you do have to show that you've been vaccinated from my understanding I believe that that's the case so yeah and it looks like they're going to offer those options through zoom as well for folks who um, either can't or um, are uncomfortable attending in person Okay, if there are no other announcements or other business, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. All right. Short meeting, y'all. Yes. <laughs> they, have they, they, they will be longer. Yes. Yep. Shorter one. <laughs> yeah.
All right. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. See you all next month. Thank you all. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.